Congressman Paul, as you know, when Standard & Poor's downgraded the country's uh, credit reading, rating last week, one of the reasons S&P listed was because of partisan gridlock in Washington. Congressman, what specific things would you do as president to increase growth, calm the markets, create jobs that could pass through a divided Congress? Well, they didn't downgrade it mainly because they couldn't come to a conclusion. They couldn't come to a conclusion because they didn't know what was going on. The country's bankrupt and nobody wanted to admit it. And when you're bankrupt, you can't keep spending. And all these proposed cuts weren't cuts at all. What you have to do is restore sound money. You have to understand why you have a business cycle, why you have booms and busts. If you don't do that, there's no way you can solve these problems. And the booms and busts comes from a failed monetary system. The, the interest rates that are way lower than, than they should should be encourages malinvestment and debt. And to get out of that, all this other tinkering, you cannot do that unless you liquidate debt. You don't bail out the people that are bankrupt and dump the debt on the people. That is what's happened. So you have to allow liquidation of debt, eliminate the malinvestment, then you go back and you can get growth again by having a better tax structure, lower taxes, invite capital back into this country, get a lot less regulations, and under those conditions you can have growth Again. And you can get it through a divided Congress. Well, <laughs> the divided Congress will exist for a long time to come. Yes, you would have to get it through a, uh, you have to get it through a divided Congress. But the one thing is, if you approach it constitutionally, if you approach it on the principles of liberty, you can bring people together. If we have to cut. Maybe we wouldn't be so, so determined that you can't cut one nickel out of the militarism around the world. Neither the Democrats or the Republicans want to cut that. So if you want to cut, you have to put the militarism on the table as well. Mr. King. Okay, Congressman Paul, you're opposed to a system that requires employers to verify the immigration status of their workers. Why would you want to eliminate one more tool to help curb illegal immigration? I don't like putting the burden on our businessmen to be the policeman. That means he has to be a policing activity. And I also resent the fact that illegals come into this country and they do have problems, but if a church helps them and feeds them, we don't blame the church, or at least we shouldn't in a free society. But I have a strong position on immigration. I don't think that uh, uh, we should give uh, amnesty and they become voters. Uh, but I do think we should deal with our borders. But one way that I would suggest that we could do it is pay a lot less attention to the borders between Afghanistan and Iraq and bring and, and, and Pakistan and bring our troops home and deal with the border. But why do we pay more attention to the borders overseas and less attention to the borders here at home? We now are ha we have a mess on the borders and it has a lot more to do with it than just immigration because we're financing some of this militarism against the, the drug dealers in on the borders right now to the tune of over a billion dollars. And there is a mess down there, but it's much bigger than, uh, than, than j just the immigration problem. But I do not believe in, in giving entitlements to illegal immigrants at all, and there should be no mandates on the states to make them do it. Congressman Paul, you are a constitutional expert, and you talk a lot about the Constitution. What do you think of this argument that the state has a constitutional right to make someone buy a good or service just because they're a resident, not because they're driving and need a driver's license, but just the fact that they are a resident? No, the way I would understand the Constitution, the federal government can't go in and prohibit the states from doing bad things. And I would consider that a very bad thing, but you don't send in a federal police force because they're doing it and throw them in a court. So they do have that leeway under our Constitution. But we have big trouble in this medical care problem, and uh, we have drifted so far from any of our care being delivered by the marketplace. And once you get the government involved, and both parties have done it, they've developed a, a bit of a, a medical care delivery system based on corporatism. The corporations are doing quite well, whether it's Obama or under the Republican. The drug companies do well, the insurance companies do well, the organized medicine do well, organ, uh, the management companies do well. The patient and the doctor suffer. There's a wedge. Every time you hit the government, get in here with these regulations and have these mandates, there's a wedge driven in between the doctor and the patient. We have to get the people more control of their care, and that's why these medical savings accounts could at least introduce the notion of market delivery of medical care. 
Senator Santorum. Texas Governor Rick Perry obviously is not here tonight. He is giving a speech on Saturday in South Carolina. We're told he's getting into this race, but he's not answering questions tonight. He's not taking part in the straw poll on Saturday. So is he outsmarting you? 30 seconds, Congressman Paul. Well, maybe he didn't want to face up to the challenge for all we know. <laughs> Are you worried about this strategy? Oh no, I'm very pleased that he's coming in because uh, he represents the status quo and I feel like I'm sort of separated from the other candidates with my strong belief in liberty and limited government and a different foreign policy and want to deal with the Fed, so he'll just dilute all their votes. Okay. Mr. Kane, what about... Congressman Paul. Congressman Paul, you say that President Obama is not uh, too soft on Iran. You say that he is too tough on Iran. I want to put up some of your statements. Sanctions are not diplomacy, you say. They are a precursor to war and an embarrassment to a country that pays lip service to free trade. As for Iran's nuclear ambitions, you wrote this. One can understand why they might want to become nuclear capable if only to defend themselves and to be treated more respectfully. Is that your policy towards Iran? Well, even our own CIA gives me this information that they have no evidence that they're working on a weapon. Just think of what we went through in the Cold War when I was in the Air Force, after I was drafted in the Air Force, all through the 60s. We were, we were standing up against the Soviets. They had like 30,000 nuclear weapons with intercontinental missiles. Just think of the agitation and the worrying of a country that might get a nuclear weapon someday, and just think of how many nuclear weapons surround Iran. The Chinese are there, the Indians are there, the Pakistanis are there, the Israelis are there, the United States is there, all these countries. China has nuclear weapons. Why wouldn't it be natural that they might want a weapon? There'd be, internationally, they'd be given more respect. Why should we write people off? There was, you know, in the 50s, we at least talked to them. At least our leaders and Reagan talked to the Soviets. What's so terribly bad about this? And people where, countries that you put sanctions on, you are more likely to fight them. I say a policy of peace is free trade, stay out of the internal business, don't get involved in these wars, and just bring our troops home. Congress, Congressman Paul, Congressman Paul, I want to just give you 15 seconds. I want to just make sure I understand. So your policy towards Iran is if they want to develop a nuclear weapon, that's their right. No sanctions. No effort to stop them. No, I think that makes. I think that thing that makes it much worse. Why would that be so strange? If the Soviets and the Chinese have nuclear weapons, we tolerated the Soviets. We didn't attack them, and they were a much greater danger. They were the greatest danger to us in, in our whole history. But you don't go to war against them. I mean, this whole idea of sanctions, all these pretend free traders, they're the ones who put on these trade sanctions. This is why we still don't have trade relationships with Cuba. It's about time we talk to Cuba and still stop fighting these wars that are about 30 or 40 years old. Mr. Mr. Kane, I, just, I, just, I, I, Senator Santorum, I got a question for you. Well, I, as the author of the Iran Freedom Support Act, which he is criticizing, because I authored it when I was in the United States sanction, that, the Senate would actually impose sanctions on Iran because of their nuclear program. Iran is not Iceland, Ron. Iran is a country that has been at war with us since 1979. Iran is a country that has killed more American men and women in uniform in, in Iraq and Afghanistan than the Iraqis and the Afghanistans have. Afghanistanis have. The, Ira the Iranians, Why, the please? Iranians, the Iranians are, are the existential threat to the state of Israel. You ask the, you ask the Israelis what keeps them up at night. It's the Iranians funding of Hamas and Hezbollah okay. 30, and the support of Syria. 30 seconds. And the reason, hold on, let me finish. The no, no, there's, there's, there are rules here, sir. Yeah, I know there are rules, and you guys have been giving these guys a lot of time and not a whole lot of time you're, to you me, so question, let me answer the you question. You have a question coming. Okay. The, the, senator, the senator is wrong on his history. We've been at war in, in, in uh, Iran for a lot longer than 79. We started it in 1953 when we sent in a coup, installed the Shah, and the reaction, the uh, blowback came in 1979. It's been going on and on because we just plain don't mind our own business. That's our problem. <laughs> 
Congressman Paul says terrorism suspects, suspects have committed a crime and are due, or should be given due process in civilian courts. Could you please tell Congressman Paul why he's wrong? Well, because simply terrorists who commit acts against United States citizens, people who are from foreign countries who do that, do not have any right on our const under our Constitution to Miranda rights. We've also seen that Guantanamo Bay has yielded significant information. In fact, we've learned that that led to the capture and the killing of bin Laden. This is a tool that we need to have in order to be able to prosecute the new type of war, the new type of warfare, and the new type of terrorists that this country is dealing with. Regarding Iran, Iran is the central issue in the Middle East and their capacity be to become a nuclear power. They are one of the four state sponsors of terror in the world. I sit on the House Select Committee on Intelligence. I can't reveal classified information, but I can say this. As President of the United States, I will do everything to make sure that Iran does not become a nuclear power. 30 seconds, Congressman Paul. Well, I think she turns our rule of law on its head. She says that the terrorists don't deserve protection under our courts, but therefore a judgment has to be made. They're ruled a terrorist. Who rules them a terrorist? I thought our courts recognized that you had to be tried, and we've, we've done this. And we've brought individuals back from, uh, from Pakistan and other places. We've given them a trial in this country. Over 300, or at least near 300, we've tried and put them in prison. So this idea that we, we have to turn on the head and reject the rule of law, we already are at the point where this administration, please let me finish, have a second, this administration, this administration, this administration already has accepted the principle that when you assume somebody is a terrorist, they can be targeted for assassination, even American citizens. That affects all of us eventually. You don't want to translate our rule of law into a rule of mob rule. Senator Santorum. Senator Sanctum, I want to pick up on this debate. You say Attorney General Holder must be under the influence, and in fact you've suggested perhaps smoking mushrooms, to want to try terrorists in civilian court. Are you also suggesting that Congressman Paul is under the influence? Well, uh, any, anyone, anyone that suggests that Iran is not a threat to this country, or is not a threat to stability in the Middle East, is obviously not seeing the world very clearly. He sees it exactly the way that Barack Obama sees it, that he has to go, we have to go around and apologize for the fact that we've gone out and exerted our influence to create freedom around the world. I don't apologize for that. I don't apologize for the Iranian people being free for a long time, and now they're under a, under a malocracy that, that uh, tramples the rights of women, tramples the rights of gays, tramples the rights of people all, all throughout their society, and is the greatest supporter of terrorism in the Middle East and around the world and is setting up training camps and is working with Venezuela and other countries in our south of our border to threaten us. This is, the, the, Iran is a country that must keep, be confronted. I was, in front of the, I was in front of this curb. I authored the Iran Freedom Support Act back in 19, excuse me, 2004. It was blocked by Joe Biden, nonetheless, and Barack Obama once. We got it passed. And I can tell you, if Rick Santorum and when Rick Santorum is president, Iran will not get a nuclear weapon because the world as we know it will be no more. Cong Congressman Paul, 30 seconds. You've heard the war propaganda that is liable to lead us into the sixth war, and I worry about that position. Iran is a threat because they have some militants there. But believe me, they're all around the world, and they're, excuse me, they're, they're all around the world, and they're not a whole lot different than others. Iran does not have an air force that can come here. They don't have, they can't even make enough gasoline for themselves. And here we are, you know, building this case up, please, please, uh, they're building up this case like, just like we did in Iraq, build up the war propaganda. There was no Al Qaeda in Iraq, and they had nuclear weapons, and we had to go in. I'm sure you supported that war as well. Yeah. Okay. It's time we quit this. It's time. It's trillions of dollars we're spending on these wars.